The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at the Bia Palace. The cabinet praised Bahrain's address delivered by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa at the first AU GCC summit in Belgium. The cabinet highlighted the importance of the address, which underscored the shared GCC EU visions of fostering security, stability, and regional unity, reiterating the imperative to break the current escalatory cycle in the region to avoid a wider regional conflict, as well as calling on the international community to join His Majesty the King's initiative to convene an international peace conference on the Middle East. The cabinet reviewed the executive measures undertaken by ministers and government entities to implement the royal order issued by His Majesty. The royal order aims to preserve the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities, including the renovation of Isa al-Kabir Palace and the development of Muharraq in a manner that safeguards its rich heritage. The cabinet also followed up on the directives of His Royal Highness regarding the implementation of the Muharraq Development Plan. The cabinet approved the acquisition of several properties in Muharraq as part of the Urban Development Plan, based on a proposal submitted by the Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture. The cabinet praised the efforts of the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which successfully facilitated the return of five detained Bahrainis from Yemen. In commemoration of United Nations Day, the cabinet extended its congratulations to the UN and reaffirmed the significance of upholding the principles of values of the UN. The cabinet then approved the following. In light of His Majesty the King's issuance of the Royal Decree in September, pardoning 457 inmates, marking the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne and the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the Interior Minister and the Labour Minister were instructed to ensure that all pardoned individuals who meet the terms and conditions and registered as beneficiaries of unemployment benefits for job seekers. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Education and Training Quality Authority regarding the approval of the authority's reports. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Education and Training Quality Authority regarding the performance of the education and training sector in Bahrain, which showed the continued improvement of educational and training institutions and academic programs. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals and three laws submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then noted the following ministerial reports. The outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the 11th session of the Bahraini Kuwaiti Joint Higher Committee. The outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the 35th session of the Council of Arab Ministers responsible for environmental affairs and the outcomes of the first session of the Ministerial Council of the Middle East Green Initiative. The outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the 89th meeting of the Executive Bureau of the Arab Ministers of Housing and Urban Development Council. A report submitted by the Minister of Education on Bahrain hosting the 2024 International School Games. And the outcomes of the official visit of the Minister of Industry and Commerce to the UK. The government and all concerned authorities are working to accelerate the implementation of the Royal Decree on the Muharraq City Development Project and the plan to develop the Sheikh Isa Kabir Palace and Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa Mosque to preserve its cultural and historical identity. More in this report. <laughs> وسنعمل في سياق ذلك على إحياء قصر عيسى الكبير الذي سنعتمده كأحد المقار الرئيسية لعملنا ومعها الأحياء المعروفة بمدينة المحرق التي نتطلع إلى عودة أهلها لها تكريما لذلك المجد الوطني المشهود في وطن الطيبة والكرامة Due to the exceptional cultural and historical heritage of Muharraq City and its special place in the hearts of all Bahrainis, the Royal Order came during the opening of the second session of the sixth legislative term on October 8, 2023, to develop an action plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of the Kingdom's buildings and cities, especially the revival of the Isa al Kabir Palace and the well known neighborhoods in Muharraq City, with the aim of preserving these historical features. Immediately after the issuance of His Majesty the King's order, the government and all concerned authorities were quick to fulfill the royal order. 
On October 11th of last year, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister visited the Maharag Governorate, where the Isa El Kabir Palace and Maharag's unique architectural houses are located. During the visit, the city's development plan was launched and the plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities was activated. The development plan is based on five aspects, which includes preserving the historical identity of Maharag, providing housing units that meet the aspirations of the Bahraini family, preserving the buildings of heritage value, increasing the green area and diversifying its afforestation, in addition to developing infrastructure services and public utilities. On October 20th this year, His Majesty the King was briefed on the phases and the completed stages of the Muharraq City Development Project and the plan to develop the Sheikh Isa Al Kabir Palace and the Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa Mosque to preserve the cultural and historical identity in all regions of Bahrain. His Majesty praised the efforts of all concerned parties working together to accelerate the implementation of this royal order in light of Bahrain's pride in its ancient history and landmarks. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Minister of Education and Chairman of the Higher Organizing Committee of the International School Games ISF Gymnasium Bahrain 2024, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak Jum'a, and members of the committee. His Highness welcomed the Chairman and the members of the International School Games Committee, which will be held from 24th to the 31st of October under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness was briefed on the latest preparations made by the Executive Committee, which will be held in cooperation with the International School Sports Federation and in partnership with various government and private sectors. His Highness praised the efforts exerted during the past period and the cooperation between the Ministry of Education, the GSA, the BOC, and the Bahrain School Sports Federation and universities in order to finalize all arrangements related to the hosting of the event. He stressed the importance of doubling efforts during the coming period for the countdown of the launch of the event. He stressed that the event is the largest sporting event hosted by the Kingdom with the participation of more than 5,000 students representing more than 70 countries, which requires the completion of all arrangements in an appropriate and honorable manner. He praised the efforts of the members of the organizing committee and the executive committee, wishing everyone continued success. The Crown Prince of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah, received the Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Abdul Latif Al Rashid Al Zayani and his accompanying delegation on the occasion of the 11th session of the Joint Higher Committee between the two countries in the presence of Kuwait Foreign Minister Abdullah Ali Abdullah Al Yahya. His Highness praised the strong historic ties between the two nations and conveyed his greetings and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, wishing Bahrain continued progress and prosperity. For his part, Dr. Zayani conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness to His Highness the Crown Prince of Kuwait, wishing Kuwait further growth and prosperity. He also commended the joint efforts to strengthen bilateral cooperation to achieve common interests. The Prime Minister of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed Abdullah Ahmed Al Sabah, received the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Rashid Al Zayani, and his accompanying delegation on the occasion of the 11th session of the Joint Higher Committee between the two countries in the presence of Kuwait's Foreign Minister Abdullah Ali Yahya. His Highness welcomed Dr. Al Zayani and relayed his greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, noting the strong relations between Bahrain and Kuwait. He highlighted the progress and the joint cooperation at all levels. For his part, Dr. Zayani conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness and their best wishes for Kuwait's continued development. He highlighted the progress and the joint cooperation at all levels. The 11th meeting of the Joint Higher Committee between Bahrain and Kuwait was held, chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Rashid Al Zayani, and the Kuwaiti Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdullah Ali Abdullah Al Yahya. Al Yahya welcomed the convening of the Joint Committee, noting the depth of the historical fraternal relations between the two countries and their peoples. He said that these distinguished relations are a role model in a constructive cooperation and solidarity at all levels. He stressed that the partnership between the two sides is a strategic vision based on a rich history of cohesion and solidarity, as regional and international challenges require enhancing strategic integration and solidarity to face them. For his part, Dr. Zayani expressed his pride in the bilateral relations and the joint keenness to develop them at all levels. The two sides discussed the paths of bilateral cooperation and the progress achieved in various fields and ways to enhance efforts to develop fraternal relations to more comprehensive levels and to advance political action, consultation and joint coordination to serve mutual interests and common goals. At the conclusion of the meeting, the two ministers signed a number of memorandums of understanding for joint cooperation between the governments of the two countries in the fields of diplomatic and administrative training, in addition to the executive program for cooperation in the field of education and a cooperation agreement in the field of ports and maritime navigation. Thank you. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, accompanied by the Kuwaiti Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdullah Ali Abdullah Yahya, paid a visit to a Salam Palace Museum. The minister toured the museum, during which he was briefed on its diverse contents, which reflect the history of Kuwait in different historical eras, the biography of its rulers, as well as archaeological and heritage items. The minister listened to a detailed explanation of the history of the museum, the purpose of its establishment, and the efforts made by the competent authorities to transform the palace into a distinguished museum to be visited by visitors and tourists and those interested in Kuwaiti history. The minister expressed pleasure with this visit and praised the efforts of Kuwaiti government to establish this civilized edifice and its distinctive design as well as its multiple facilities that reflect the diversity of its archaeological and heritage symbols and the rich cultural heritage of Kuwait. The President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, received Sheikh Mohammed bin Mohammed Al Mukhtar Al Shanqiti from Mauritania on the occasion of the visit to the Kingdom to present the first session of the Tafsir Council's program organized by the Institute of Readings and Preparation of Quran Teachers. Sheikh Abdul Rahman praised the efforts exerted by Sheikh Al Shanqiti in serving the Holy Quran and its sciences, especially in the field of Tafsir through research, writing, teaching, and public speaking. For his part, Sheikh Shinqiti expressed pride and appreciation to Sheikh Abdul Rahman for this meeting, praising his role and the Council in serving Islam and the Holy Quran, as well as the programs offered by the Institute. The Minister of Labor, Jamil Ahmedan, participated in a ceremony held by Nasij Company on the occasion of achieving 100% Bahrainization in all jobs in the presence of the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Labor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the CEO of Nasij Company, Amin Larayad, and officials. Ahmedan praised the company's efforts in attracting national labor. He emphasized the importance of the private sector's role in providing job opportunities for Bahraini youth and qualifying and empowering them to integrate them into various productive sectors. He said that this achievement reflects the the extent of the private sector's commitment to supporting sustainable economic development in Bahrain. He called on companies to adopt effective policies to attract more national talents and pointed out the importance of optimal investment in Bahraini cadres. For his part, Al Arayyad affirmed that the company will continue to enhance the efficiency of national cadres and develop their skills. On the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the first municipal council elections, the Kingdom of Bahrain celebrates the achievements of municipal work over the past years and qualitative leaps made during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. More in this report. Municipal work in the Kingdom of Bahrain has a long history filled with achievements for more than 100 years, which witnessed the most prominent stages of development and great successes are presented in the development and organization of services, administrative and community work, in addition to involving citizens in the decision-making process from an early time to be an integral part of the development and growth of the Kingdom. The rulers of the Kingdom of Bahrain have been and continue to be a civilized example of support for national achievements in various fields, especially municipal work, and during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, interest in the development of municipal work has increased. These national efforts aim to build a prosperous future in which municipal work is an active partner in many of the Kingdom's national achievements. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sayrafi, participated in the 63rd International Congress and Convention Association Congress held in the UAE. The Minister stressed the importance of the Congress as a vital platform for exchanging ideas, experiences and enhancing international cooperation. She noted that Bahrain spares no effort in strengthening its position as a leading center as it seeks through the tourism strategy to increase a contribution to the GDP to attract a diverse group of visitors from different countries. Sayrafi pointed out that Bahrain has achieved tangible steps in developing its tourism infrastructure, including the establishment of Exhibition World Bahrain and the development of Bahrain International Airport, with the aim of facilitating the flow of tourists and visitors. The minister also expressed her aspiration to benefit from the opportunities for cooperation and partnerships during the conference. She stressed that Bahrain pays great attention to providing a supportive environment for investment in tourism. Sayrafi added that Bahrain is committed to strengthening channels of communication and cooperation with the GCC in a way that contributes to achieving tourism integration between them. The Minister of Education and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Jum'a, inaugurated the university's exhibition organized by the Alumni Club. More in this report. A specialized and comprehensive exhibition that brings together all universities in Bahrain under one roof 
in addition to the platforms of foreign universities that participate in this exhibition, which witnessed the participation of more than 17 universities from the Kingdom of Bahrain, in addition to centers and agencies representing several foreign universities. Uh, of course, these kind of uh, gatherings and exhibitions, they uh, bring students to the uh, closed universities and um, as the University of Technology of Bahrain, we also participate in these kind of gatherings and it's very important for students as well as for the university as we are able to connect with students directly and also uh, inform them about the kind of programs that we offer for, and what kind of new programs we offer, the international accreditations that we have and why they should enroll with the University of Technology of Bahrain. And I think these kind of exhibitions are very important in helping the students make a decision once they leave school, once they graduate. The organization of this exhibition comes within the alumni club's vision to enhance communication between students and educational institutions and provide everything that would empower the youth and guide them towards an academic and professional future. So the American University of Bahrain, we are the only American university in the kingdom, so we get to show what makes us um, unique here. Um, for the students, this event is great because they get to see what their options are, right? We are all here for the students' success in the end, so exhibitions like this allow them to weigh their options and for us to show what we can do for their success. It's an important event, especially for the alumni. I mean, how can we promote uh, our university? We use actually our alumni. So basically here being in this club, this is basically the message that alumni who have already passed into these universities are there, first of all, to help us, to support us, to give their experience their real life examples to be part of this uh, evaluation because we have students especially in grade 12 they're coming to the university on campus we visit them in schools and in such activities and fairs they don't know what to do so we are here i'm a professor i have a professional experience and that's basically actually the trend other than the artificial intelligence, we need actually workers who have worked in the professional field before they become professionals and teachers. This is the trend in our university and I'm sure it's happening all over the world. The exhibition includes a number of accompanying events, including workshops and guidance sessions on choosing the appropriate academic specializations, as well as some participating universities offering scholarships to support students in achieving their educational goals. King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence participated in the World Congress on Interfaith Dialogue in Manama organized by the Apostolic Vicariate of the Northern Arabia of the Catholic Church. The World Congress included discussions that highlight the role of education in combating hate speech and promoting peaceful coexistence, as well as the importance of building bridges between cultures and religions to achieve sustainable peace. The Deputy Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Center, Ali Al Aradi, expressed his pride in Bahrain hosting this conference within the framework of its firm commitment under the leadership of His Majesty the King to establish the values of tolerance, peaceful coexistence and respect for others and to support interfaith dialogue as an urgent necessity to enhance the spirit of cooperation and peace and to spread the values of justice, harmony and human brotherhood and to reject violence, hatred and conflicts and to overcome differences. I think this kind of uh, initiative helps bring people of different faiths together for better understanding between people and religions helping to build bridges, especially at a time of heightened conflict in the world at this time. And we're going to talk a lot about hate speech and how to combat that. I think this is a very opportune moment to do something and to try to come up with some concrete uh, initiatives to try to combat hate speech, especially in schools and in educational institutions. In order to to celebrate the friendship between uh, Christian, Muslims and other religions. We want to go for the history to see what happened in the past. We want to give an example of the Trinitarian order, order who was in charge of relation with the Arabic world in the, the history. And we want to see that we have most and many alternatives in the dialogue and uh, especially in this time we have some violence going around so we want to see that the interreligious dialogue and solidarity is very important and this uh, moment of uh, congress is uh, for us uh, essential to go and to understand each other so we thank uh, the king ahmad uh, 
Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence is the place in order to speak and to be together. Arab Parliament Speaker Adel Assoumi participated in the conference launching the Arab Women's Parliamentary Document in Jordan. Al Assoumi praised Bahrain's pioneering experience in supporting and empowering Bahraini women thanks to the unlimited support of His Majesty the King. The Speaker emphasized that Bahraini women under the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty made many achievements and reached the highest positions at the national, regional and international levels and have a firm and influential role in supporting national action.